Oh, my bad. How do you flip it there? There. <laughs> Hello. Let's see. Do we have anyone yet? I see anything there. Hi, Christy. Uh, All right, right, we got folks. Come on in. Hey, everyone. We are live, live, live. <laughs> Live on Facebook. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And live on Instagram. Hi guys, how y'all doing? Hey everybody. Good to have you here. It's Friday again. Hope you are as excited as we are. Yes. <laughs> All right. So we're just let's gonna get started. Yeah, we just just let's get started. Let's get to it. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So um after last week's conversation, this week we decided to continue talking some more about relationships. Yes. And I know some of you asked last week for us to um, expand shape some more on deal breakers. So we decided to uh, do that for y'all today. So we're excited. We have a great lineup. Um, how was your week? Uh, it's Friday, right? Yeah, I hope y'all's week was great, actually. What's uh, up? Hi, Taddy. It's been a... It's been a crazy week for me. Busy. Roller busy, coaster, busy, actually. Busy, busy, Lots of just stuff. Yeah. So this is actually our winding down time or our Welcome winding down people. time. I see some people from Nigeria. Shout out to Olumini from Nigeria. Wow. <laughs> okay. What's up, guys? <laughs> yeah. Time frame, huh? The time difference. And we appreciate you guys coming on in here. So let's get right into it today. Awesome. Um, let's do it. First question I have for you guys, did anybody change anything in their dating pattern since last week <laughs> or in your relationship patterns since last week uh, or even in your marriages? Because I know some people, we have some marriage, uh, married folks that were on, him, on here last week and um, we got feedback that it was beneficial even for marriage. So um, if you changed anything or you learned anything, Comment, let's hear it. Let's, uh, um, you know, uh, bless each other. Babe, what are we doing today? Right, so today we're going to be going into um, deal breakers. Deal breakers. And again, we want to give uh, kudos to whom it's due. Uh, we're getting a whole lot of content. Uh, and this week we're going to be speaking uh, specifically on Finding the Love of Your Life by Pastor Rick Warren. Uh, it's one of my favorite pastors. Yeah. So, um, so that's where we're getting a whole lot of the information from. Of course, Tessie and I reviewed them. We put a little bit of ourselves into it. Yep. Uh, to make it uh, as holistic as, as possible. As possible. Yeah. But, um, so we're going to be talking about that today. But before, very importantly, uh, a question that, that I know that a lot of you guys have asked me is, you know, will, will I ever get married uh, or, or even if I'm going to get married, you know, who when? will it be? Mm -hmm. You know, how do I know who that person would be? But the truth is that that choice has to be intentional. And last week we learned that it's a choice. Uh, mm -hmm. The person that you decide to spend your life with or the rest of your life with is a you choice that you must make. You Unfortunately, uh, God doesn't choose that person for us. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to be the ones to make that choice. And then he'll uh, bless it. And he'll bless it. Then he'll bless it. <laughs> yes. There's sometimes when he will tell you, uh, yeah, no. Yes. Sometimes, most times he'll tell you no. He'll tell you no. <laughs> and there's times when you go to him and he's like, sure, I, I guess you can marry you can, this You man. can walk with that. Doesn't mean, you know, that that's like the only option that exists and, you know, that's it. But again, if you go to, if you go to God in prayer with the person that you are um, considering, uh, marrying, be ready for what the answer is yes. and be ready for what the outcome is when you decide on what your choice is. And a lot of times you might just say no. So be ready to hear no and take action okay. on that because that's what most of us don't want to listen to. But before we jump right in, mm -hmm. uh, one thing I want to do and Tosi and I uh, prayed about exciting. this is, exciting. yeah, super exciting. We decided that we, uh, God placed it on our heart to bless somebody. Yeah. Uh, and how do we do that? I want to throw out a contest right now. Yeah. To whomever can list five out of the ten. And if you weren't here last week, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a motivation for you to, go to, watch, to the go previous watch the previous video and, then and catch up. Catch us next Be week. Because yeah. what we're doing today 
would be meaningless if you don't know what we talked about last week. Yeah. So contest today to everybody that's online right now. Just the uh, contest, not not what we're doing today. Right. The contest. The contest. Going you may, on. You may not be able to participate in the contest because you missed last, last week. Last week. But here's the contest. Go ahead, baby. All right. So 50 bucks. Yeah. $50. Grocery money. Towards your grocery money. Well, it could go to whatever, but or whatever you want to do with it. Money. Uh, to whoever can list five out of the ten nuggets that we gave out last. But week. you gotta call in. But you have to call in. So call in right now. Give us five. Five. Five, five out of ten. Of the ten. Call in right now. Rules of dating get, that we gave last week. So just request, request to, to join request. the call. $50, I promise you'll send in your Zelle information and we will definitely get it to you right away, right after the call. Let's, promise. Let's do it. You got to call in. So we're waiting. The first person to we're call waiting, in. We're waiting. We're waiting. Come on, guys. Oh, come on, y'all. <laughs> Did nobody attend last week? No, you can't list it. You don't, have to call in. Don't list it. it. You have to call it in. If you list it, you're helping somebody else. Absolutely. We need you to call in. We want to see your faces. We want to talk to you. Clock is We ticking. listed... 10 rules of dating last week. Teddy, would you stop listing so, it? In some, <laughs> some people don't listen to instructions. How did you pass in school? <laughs> you have to call in, you Teddy. You have to call in. Teddy, if you know the answers, call in. Let's see if we can answer. call you then, since you seem to know it. That's him up top. Yep. <laughs> All right, let's hear. We're going we're gonna to hear from, uh, let's see if Teddy's willing. Yeah. Just, just quickly, my money. I'm ready. How did you What's pass up? in school, huh? You don't follow instructions? <laughs> just, are you, are you ready? Yes. Hold on, Most hold on. attraction. Tosin's going to check. Now, be right. careful now. We said five of the ten. There were some that had sub, subs in them. So be it's careful. Okay. I'll give it a shot. Let's hear it. Let's, Let's hear, it. hear it, though. Is it I'm emotional gonna... traction? Physical attraction, intellectual attraction. Yeah. That's all one. That's all one. Attraction is one, remember? I don't know where you got intellectual attraction from. You <laughs> said it last week, no? Yeah. So mm -hmm. all attractions are grouped into one. Attraction was... Okay, one. emotional healthiness. Is that one of them? No. Go ahead, just list your Love. five. List Love. your five. Love. What? Love. <laughs> No, it's not love. It's hate. <laughs> He's healthier. Somebody. Daddy. Come on, man. Let's go. We're going to call you after you're ready. Bye. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. We'll continue. But uh, here's so the somebody, challenge. Somebody just failed. <laughs> yeah. We'll continue. But here's the challenge. $50 to anyone who can list five out of the ten um rules of dating that we listed well, last that we discussed week. last week five out of ten all, all right, right let's keep going and if you're ready and you have it you can call in if not you can dm us uh, actually no I, I want you to call in because i i have a funny feeling y'all gonna research and then go ahead and start typing stuff so we want you to call <laughs> <laughs> also all right so proverbs twelve twenty six lets us know that the righteous chooses their friends carefully mm. uh so if we choose our friends carefully how much more the person that we're going to spend the rest of our lives with. Yeah. So, um, Tosa is going to, is going to jump in here. Yeah. We're going to correct uh, uh, three myths about marriage. Yes. Let's see. I see some people waving. Are you waving or do you want to answer our questions? <laughs> if you want to answer the question, just go ahead and call in. Um, and then we'll take the call and we'll take the call and you call in by, um, I believe you slide all the way up and it'll ask you to request to join the live feed. And if you request it, we'll accept it, and then we'll go from there. By the way, it is not on Google. <laughs> For everyone that's saying it's on Google. Yes, Google also <laughs> a way to find out. Uh, yeah, no, Wendy, y'all go mislead. <laughs> $50. All right, let's move on. Um, correcting, um, we want to correct three myths about marriage. Three myths about marriage. Number one. One of the myths is that God chooses my mate for me. And I think we already talked about that earlier. Um, one of the things I heard from um, Pastor Rick Warren that I thought was a great comparison was he said that um, you cannot stare a car that is not moving. If a car is parked, 
there is no way you can stare it. It's just going to stay in the same spot. Stay in the same spot. But if the car is moving, you can stare it in the direction you need. And that's exactly how it works with marriage. If you go out there, find your wife or get, a, I mean, get found by a spouse, your husband, then God can stare you guys in the direction in which you need to go. Yes. So that's how that is. You choose, he blesses. That's our take. That's our belief. I don't believe, I'm one of the people who, do, who does not believe in the concept of the one. I know there are some people out there. I understand. You may totally not agree with me. That's okay. But I know that God blesses any. I mean, God will bless the marriage of your choice as long as you include him in it. Absolutely. He, you have to include That's him the as, the, as the top and then the two of you as the supporting roles. And yeah. as long as all three of you are in there, he'll bless it. You got to have him though in it. Um, the other um, uh, myth that we want to um, debunk is there is only, oh, psh, there's only one right person for me. Yeah, it's in there already. Yeah, in there. So there are multiple opportunities that God will say okay to and a million that he will say no to. It's up to you. If you decide to go in, go on for it. Someone wants to, oh, someone requested to be in the live video. All right. Hope you have our five answers here. Olumiski. Let's see. With all the five? All right. Let's see. Let's hear it. I think it just dropped. Oh, my. Oh, no. Okay. Let's well, call back again. in. Let's try right. again. Um, the third myth is so first one is god chooses my mate for me second one is there's only one right person for me third one is love alone is enough reason to marry uh -oh. we talked about this last week if you were here last week you know for a fact love alone is not enough to marry if that was the case hollywood marriages would be Number one yes. example of how to be married, because that's always the case. The movies tell you that that's all you need. I love you, so let's do this. No, yeah. you need a whole lot. The people who are married will tell you that you need a whole lot more than love yeah. to stay married. Uh, so given the right circumstances, you really can fall in love with anybody. Let's be real. Anybody? Anybody, even a baboon. In the right <laughs> circumstance. Yes, that is the truth. Wow. So just because you love somebody, does not mean you should marry them. There's okay. a whole lot more to it that you need to put checks and balances to before you proceed. Trust me, our marriage is working, yes, but there's, there's a lot that we have had to learn the hard way. That's true. That is true. And, and we, we were one of the ones that definitely jumped in. We're in love with each other. So damn the world. And, and just some of those things, just to piggyback off of what she's saying is, you have to consider the family. You have to consider the background of the person. So yes, I love you, but is your family jacked up? Uh, can I no, deal with no. your jacked up family? I mean, jacked up is yeah. not bad, but yeah. you know, we are what we see. Can, can we, yeah, how is we, your emotional state? It brings, you know, it, it, it comes with, it comes with the package. Right. And so you gotta know, you, again, we're not saying that broken people are um, to be dismissed because truly we are all broken. We're all broken people. We're yes. all broken. One way or another, your, break may, your own break may be emotional, another person's break may be spiritual, another person's break may be physical. We're all broken one way or another. The question is, can I handle your crack? If I can handle your crack, then that's okay. If I can't handle your crack, then at least let me know before I marry you. <laughs> that's the point we're talking about, okay? Awesome. If you think you're not broken, go check again. We're all broken. There's something wrong with you if you think you're perfect. Somebody said I'm not like, marrying a baboon. No. Girl, <laughs> if I leave you and a baboon in a room alone and you're the last two people on earth, that baboon gonna be looking at you with so much love in his eyes. Oh and you're probably gonna respond after a while. Trust me, you can fall in love with anybody. Okay, moving right on. <laughs> before, we, before we all start falling in love with baboons and monkeys. Hey. <laughs> That's how Corona started. Now it was a bad time. I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, uh, so let's talk about let's talk about um, the list of must-haves. The list no, of must-haves. Uh, 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 sorry, the the, the deal oh, yeah, breakers. Yeah, yeah. And so, but this list is not. It's not. Um, a, it's not comprehensive. It's not as a way. Oh, yeah, it's not all yeah. encompassing. This is just things that we think um, we would like to share with you guys, and just you know, keep it in mind as you go about your daily business. Uh, and these are things that 
will ensure that at least God blesses your relationship and oh, God yeah. blesses your, your, your union or whatever it is, uh, or with whoever it is that you're, that you're um, hanging with. Um, and that, you know, and that you experience the fullness, right? Yeah. Experience the fullness of marriage, because trust me, there's some marriages that they're together, but they're not together. Yes. A lot of us were raised in those kinds of marriages. If you let's let's be honest, we look back into our parents' marriages. A lot of them, no 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 um, disrespect or anything to my my family or my parents. A lot of them in our parents' time were together, but not together. And there's some people in this generation that are definitely carrying that residue. Um, yeah, residue. Bringing it into that's the what they saw. That's all they know. So it's okay to just be roommates, but not actually experience the depth. You know the the just the, intimacy the, the level yeah. of intimacy that yeah, god yeah. intended for marriage yes. you know there's a lot in there so you can do you can get by don't get me wrong if you want to get by this may not be the show for you if you want to <laughs> get by living experiencing a godly marriage may not be what you want but if you really really want to experience that deep intimacy then stay tuned <laughs> Yes. And someone said they like my necklace. Thank you. I actually would ha like to give a shout out to the girl who I don't remember her name, but I would if you I'd probably type it somewhere. I don't know because she's Nigerian and it says made in Ni made in heaven, assembled in Nigeria. I had to buy it. It's beautiful. Love it. So, so you bought it because you love the necklace, or you bought it because it says because I'm made in heaven and assembled in Nigeria. All right. Shout mind. out to all emotional buyers out there. Hey. <laughs> We the emotional buyers. <laughs> All right, thanks. All right, cool. So, um, but before we move right on, I want to ask you guys: What are some of the deal breakers for you? What are your deal breakers? What are deal breakers for you? Let's throw it out there. Let's see. Call actually. Let's not throw it out there. Call in right now. If you don't call in, I'm gonna call you. I know some people I can call. Uh, Tosin's gonna stop picking people. And you know me, I love to volunteer people to do things. So. Yep. And tell us what some of your deal breakers are. Let's do it right now. Right now. And before we go into that, there's something I did remember that we should do. Um, first of all, for those watching on Facebook, sorry, we're looking up. We're looking up because <laughs> we're also live on Instagram. At Instagram. Um, that's the comments. The dialogue, yeah. Yes, so that's why we're looking up. Um, but we keep Facebook because it has the uh, capacity to record for long term. So thank you for staying in tune, uh, staying tuned with that. And then the other thing is, assuming we, I know we come on this um, live every week and we assume that everybody knows who we are. Um, and I want to make sure that if it's your first time that you at least know who we are and why we are speaking on this topic. <laughs> just in case you're wondering who are these people that just like to talk. Nah. <laughs> So, uh, my name is Tosin Ali, and this is my husband. Yes. What's your name? Oh, sorry. Sami. <laughs> this is Sami Ali. I didn't realize it was that kind of introduction. It's that kind of introduction. <laughs> and we're both pastors at Newcomer House um, in Dallas, Texas, yes. here. And um, if you're watching on Facebook, then you know that because you logged in through Facebook, our, our Newcomer House page. But if you're watching on Spaces, you're probably, I don't, hopefully you know that that's our young adults and singles ministry. And he has the honor of pastoring that group. So Correct. Um, here we are. And that's why we're talking about all of this fun stuff, juicy, juicy stuff. So here goes. Who wants to tell us what their deal breaker is? Or... Let's go. Somebody's going to get picked. <laughs> mm. And I hope uh, you guys are dressed. You're getting a call. If you're getting... you are. Shell, are you still on the call? That's my little sister. Hey, Shell. Oh, Lord. Come on now. She's getting dressed. <laughs> you putting the shirt on? <laughs> Covering your hair? Which is it? <laughs> I know I'm messing with the ladies. I probably should call a guy because I know men are like you. Whatever. Oh, it's coming. Is it coming? Is it's it coming? coming? No, it says waiting for. Waiting for her to accept. Let's see. All right. Today, I want to make sure that we get to all of the juicy stuff. So let's see who. Anybody else want to share their deal breakers? Come on. Any guy out there want to share his deal breaker? You I know see what? some guys out there. Right I'm going to go back to Daddy again now because now I'm sure he can answer that one. Let's see. Again, while we're waiting on Taddy, we're still giving out $50 today at the end of this live stream. $50 to... Who 
whoever can list five of the 10 um, rules of dating that we shared last week. All right, guys. <laughs> this is Taddy and Carolyn. Actually, that's Hello. Carolyn and Taddy. Just... Hey, guys. How y'all doing? Hey. 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 So we're talking hey. deal breakers. Wanna... So, so what, are, what are some of the deal breakers for you, Carolyn? You mind um, sharing? Some things you just can't take. All the stuff that you you told yourself before you got married, uh, or before you got with Taddy, that you were like, this is my deal breaker. Because you know those things change, too, as we go. Mm. Six foot and up. <laughs> well, let me let me see. It's Tade. It's Tade. Uh, no, nah, nah, he ain't close. <laughs> no, he wasn't gonna date six foot and up, right? No, no, I'm naming no, her deal breaker. Oh, for, oh, for her. Yeah. Carolyn, your deal breaker was anything below. That was not. That no, was not. not. <laughs> Clearly, it wasn't. <laughs> All right, guys, go ahead. Share, share your deal breakers with us. No, on a serious note, um, definitely someone who could not talk, like someone who just was not a communicator. That was definitely going to be a deal breaker. Right. So you needed someone that could talk. For yes. For two years. Yeah. All right. Patty, what was yours? Give us one, just one. Kind, kindness. Kindness. So yeah. if they were um, kind. How do, you yeah, kind. How do you measure that? How do you measure that while you're dating someone? How they treat the people around them. So not, not necessarily me, because everyone oh can God. treat someone they're trying to date kindly, but you just kind of observe how they treat the people around them. So people someone who was them. mean was your deal breaker. If you watch yeah. them, they were mean to people. Yeah, mean and harsh, and yeah. That was not happening. That's good. Yeah. Great. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Let's see. <laughs> Anybody else want to share their deal breakers before we go right into the... Any, any deal breakers for anyone? Let me see if I missed any. Oh, y'all are quiet today. Last week, y'all were really chatty. <laughs> okay, we'll give y'all time. I think we have to start. We have to give you some content, and then y'all will start talking. All right, let's see. All right, so so first, uh, oh, maybe that's someone's name. I'm not sure. Okay, go ahead, baby. <laughs> so the first, uh, must have. the first must have um, is spiritual unity. Spiritual unity, and when I say that, I mean, and this is p going back to some of the things we talked about last week, mm -hmm. we need to have the same spiritual backing. And this is the reason why this is important. When the time gets really tough in the relationship, what are we measuring our conversations by? What are we using as a yardstick for how far we can take our conversations? I know people who, when they have conversations, they are allowed to throw things or hit the wall or run out of the house or you know things like that but when we have spiritual unity amongst us we understand that god has to be the center of the marriage god has to be everything so when we talk to each other we have to make sure that we're talking to each other with god with, with god as the backbone and god on the, god being the one that is leading our marriage and that keeps everybody in line and keeps everybody in check so spiritual unity i believe is the very top thing that's the first thing that's and first it was thing. the first thing last week we just um it was we called it something different in the same yeah. package if you remember i'm going to try not to reference the 10 things we said last week because <laughs> there is still a challenge going on um but it, it's simple if god is not the center of your marriage you're wasting your time. Remember, right. we talked about that earlier. It's a level of intimacy that you want to get to. There's a purpose that you were made for, for in this life. And if you're not tapping into the source in the second most important thing that you are in involved in, in this second most important decision you've ever made, which is your life partner, then you're missing out on a whole lot. Absolutely. So that's one of the things that spiritual unity is. It comes up with your kids later on. It comes up with in conversations like Sammy says, it comes up in how you guys manage your home. Yeah. If you, if I believe in God, but you, you believe in Buddha, how do we, I don't know, when, how do we... <laughs> There's shall, no common ground. Shall two much. walk together unless they, they, they agree. And I was, I was actually just going yeah, to point that out and yeah. say 2 Corinthians uh, 6, 14 to, uh, 14 to 15 tells us, it says, stop forming uh, inappropriate relationship with unbelievers. Uh, can right and wrong 
be partners? Can light have anything in common with darkness? Mm. Can a believer share life with an unbeliever? Mm. It's, it's, it's just that serious. And I know everybody that's listening to us today, is, we, we, you've heard this at some point, one point or another, uh, but then we get into those relationships with people and we want to base everything off of promises, right? Mm. Or I am going to change him. Oh, I'm, or I'm, I'm, I'll, or I'll, I'll change it. her. Mm-hmm. Or I will, things will turn around. I'll just pray for them. And, and that sounds noble in itself and it's great. But if you really can try your best possible. To save yourself save the yourself headache, headache of the extra work and stress that comes from that yeah. hope being possibly dashed, it may happen. Again, this person may turn around and become a pastor. And when I mean a pastor, I mean a man of God, not necessarily a pastor, but a man of God. They may turn around and lead you in God's purpose for your life. They Absolutely. may, but they also may not. Yeah. So totally up to you. I know we got some questions. And there was a there. question I saw by Wendy here. She yeah. says, so my own deal breaker is a guy who is too smart and each conversation turns into a lecture. Ooh, Ooh deep. Yeah. Yep. And I saw something else. I think that was one. The other. Um, so guys, pay attention. The other one was, um, <laughs> can you reach that intimacy with separate finances? Ooh, that's a. Oh, Lord. Let's, we can talk about that. That's a topic. No, that's a topic for when we do talk finances, though. Um, the, again, let me tell you something about deal breakers. And one of the things that we were talking about earlier. Deal breakers, there are certain foundational ones that mm. matter. And unfortunately, or sh- should I say fortunately, um, how you do your finances, whether you are separate or you have joined together or you decide to do uh, his, hers, and ours, is not one of the foundational um, must-haves. Because for some person, that may be a huge deal. Like, I must have my own money. And for another person... They don't care. They could care less. It doesn't bother them because they're happy with you giving them pocket money every week. Mm. For some people, um, being able to be a stay-at-home mom is what they want in their wife. They don't want a woman who, um, who is independent and making money. And for some people, that is a total deal breaker. So finances, that's one of the things that I feel like y'all, you and the person have to agree based off of your personal preference what works for you guys as a couple. Yeah. That's not something that is a foundational deal breaker. Um, well, you got to talk about it though. Remember we talked about that last week. Yeah. I think you got to well, talk about how bad is your while, while it's not a foundational deal breaker, mm-hmm. I think that it's, it's, it, it, says, it says a lot about where you are when you're able to get to the point in when your you relationship where you can actually bring things together. Combine. Where you can combine. There's a lot of battles to be won in life. There's a lot of challenges. There's a lot of things you're going to deal with on a daily basis. But when a couple is able to get to the point, and I'm not saying this is a must. No. But if you're able to get to the point where we where can, you can really that. fully trust each other with money, and Ooh. we all know how money is. We all know what the Bible says about money. Yes. But if we can get to that point, Again, going back to intimacy, there's a level of intimacy that you're able to achieve when we can put everything in one pot. It's just, it's just beautiful. But let's not dwell on that. We can talk about finances and marriage. We can, we can, we can add that to uh, the uh, future topics. I want to make sure that we're not missing too much and then we'll, get, we'll keep going. So I hope, El Sami, that we answered uh, some of your questions on that. Um, and um, I think Omo me also was concerned about that. I hope we answered it. Um, yeah, let's keep going. So, awesome. So the, um, let's see. Spiritual, oh, spiritual yeah. unity. Spiritual. We talked about that. Talk about so that. one of the statistics that um, uh, Rick, Warren, Pastor Rick Warren shared was that one out of two marriages end in divorce. And I think we also brought that up last week. One out of two marriages in the United States of America ends in divorce however in that same statistic um poll when they pulled that poll um and reviewed further couples who pray together or worship together drop that statistic to one in ten thousand ten thousand that's that's a staggering number so we're both christian or we both believe in god or we both share the same beliefs it doesn't matter which one it is as long as it's the same belief actually cuts 
that one out of two to one out of 10,000. And that's what we're shooting for. We want to change the statistics yes. in this world right now. Yes. We want Christian marriages and godly, purposeful, intentional marriages to be the norm, yeah. not the, you're the um, outlier. Yeah. And actually, just to add to those statistics, to the first one that Tosin said, one in two marriages and then in the divorce, now, statistics shows in the past seven years that social media, mm -hmm. listen to me, social media now accounts for 40% of those marriages breaking apart. Mm -hmm. I'll let you ponder on that, but go ahead. <laughs> All right. Okay. So next, um, the next must have is we must have life purpose compatibility. Yeah. I love this one. So life purpose compatibility. First of all, for this one to work, this is not one of those you're, you're on a date and you're asking the guy, what is your purpose in life? Do you know your purpose <laughs> in life? Or you're asking the girl, what is your purpose in life? I mean, yes, you should. At some, I mean, you definitely should ask that question. But the first question should be, what is your purpose in life? Do you know your purpose in life? Do I know what my purpose is in this life, why God put me on this earth. If I cannot answer that question, then I am not ready to get married. I hope I'm making sense. You have to be able to answer that question for yourself, for yourself first. Yeah. And then that way you can walk confidently into any kind of courtship or dating situation and be able to at least articulate yourself or even be able to break apart like little things that are like, mm, no, that may not work. Because let me tell you, if you are called to be a, you're called to be a minister of the Lord. You, that's what God has said, that you're going to minister yeah. in, in nations. You're going to go places. You're going to have maybe a YouTube channel that's going to hit the world. And then you decide that you're going to um, date and then in turn marry a guy who is a very private person, does not like his woman or his life on, on, on a computer or social media definitely is not looking to be seen around the world in any way. Please explain to me how this is going to work. Somebody's yeah. going to drop their own purpose. Exactly. Either you're going to have to drop your own to, to have a happy marriage, or he's going to have to be really miserable for y'all to so supposedly be happy. And, and this is why you see a lot of marriages where you fast forward 25 years and they're talking about divorce, right? Oh, I and and then you wonder, and then you're like, why have you been together for 25 years and, and what are you trying to do now? It's because one of the couple have been stifled all through that relationship. Somebody has taken a backseat all their mm. life to try to help the other person mm. and their life purpose is never jailed in the first place. And so someday a light bulb came on after 25 years or 30 years. Now they're really pissed. And now they're pissed because the kids have gone out of the house. And they don't recognize themselves. They don't know who they are anymore. So I love the question Erica asked. Erica said, what does purpose have to do with getting married? Oh, sis. There are, there are two <laughs> main questions that God's going to ask you when this whole life is over and we end up in front of him. Yep. First question. What did you do with the gospel of Jesus? What did you do with my son's information, the information I gave you when you gave your life to Christ, what then did you do with what it? What did you do with it? The second question, what did you do with the gift I gave you? Mm. What did you do with what I asked you to, what I impacted in you, your purpose in you? Did you, did you, did you achieve it? There's the parable of the, uh, it was the talents, the parable of the talents that really breaks this down. We are not on this earth to be spectators. We're not here to just sit back and then wait and count the minutes until rapture comes. And you're also not on this earth to be a lawyer or a doctor. Those are, those are things we choose. That uh, could help your way. purpose. That could help your purpose. But, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people mistake- Your uh, career or career or what I've, I, I've spent 22 years of my life since I was a child. I knew I was going to be a lawyer and I went to school and I did this and I studied. And it almost seems like it's, it's your purpose to be a lawyer. And it sounds great on paper. But the truth is, 
that's not why God placed you here. It could be and if it, what you're supposed to do is to going to benefit his, exactly. his kingdom. Exactly. Now, everything that he has put in us, every single thing that he has put in us, the one he really wants to manifest is mm. going to give all glory to him and him alone. Absolutely. I'm going to say that again. Everything that God has put in us, the one that he expects you to manifest is the one that is going to give glory to him. Mm. If for any reason you stifle that thing, you cover it up, you put it under a sheet telling yourself you're going to hold on to rapture and bring it back to him just the way he gave it to you, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have some questions to answer. <laughs> yep. So who you marry, because that's who you're going to do life with. That's who's going to walk alongside this journey with you can determine whether or not you would shine or whether your light will be fluffed out of you. I so it truly, truly matters. I, I saw see. a question from There's the lots movie. of questions yeah. now, and I want to make sure we're not missing them. Hold on. I think... Uh, I think you went too far. Yeah, okay, that was the last one. Um, okay, Wendy was agreeing. Sorry. Um, your purpose matching is key, definitely. Um, so Naomi said, okay. if you're still figuring out your purpose, what are ways to, con to court while being patient and waiting for God to reveal your purpose. Again, sis, that's why there's no rush. Remember we said that last week. No rush. Take your time. This is a huge decision. Being married to somebody is a huge decision. Look, I'd rather have a broken relationship than a broken marriage. So take your time until you know who you are. You are definitely not a gift to anybody. If you come not knowing anything about what your calling is. Because guess what? You will figure it out at some point. And when you do, if you're totally in, a, a, in, in, in England, when you should be in India, you're going to have a problem and you probably resent your partner and it may end up in a divorce. And, and, go and, and going back to, to the topic of purpose, earlier on this year, I believe we talked about this. I preached a sermon about this. And... Um, the question is always, how do I know what my purpose is? And I know that that's a real struggle and that's a real thing. But the answer to that is actually simpler than a lot of us think it is. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go back to Matthew 6, 33, mm -hmm. I believe it is, where the Bible talks about seeking first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added unto us. I was talking to a dear friend of mine earlier today and we were talking about that and how, how we've always heard it. We've always known that verse. Mm -hmm. But for those of us who grew up as Christians, as, as children, it's like a huge memory verse. But for whatever reason, it's difficult for us to actually internalize it and actually practice it. In order for you to know your purpose in life, you have to seek God with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul, with everything that you've got. And when you seek him first, he will reveal your purpose to you. But as long as you keep on dilly-dallying and you're giving him half or 25% of what you got, well, guess what? You're always going to stay confused about what your purpose is. Yep. yep. All right? Yep. So real quick again, um, to help you guys a little bit, I'm going to give you some Bible passages to um, corroborate what we're talking about, with pur why purpose is important. Knowing your purpose and also having purpose compatibility. <clears throat> with your partner, why it's important. Amos 3.3 3 says, can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? Nah. You're going to keep, you will not move forward. You just stay where you are because you guys, I, I know women who are a shadow of themselves after they get married. Like you literally, I'm not even playing, don't recognize them. You could have, before they got married, you could see the path they were on to greatness. And then they get married and all of a sudden, you don't even know who they are anymore. It's strange. Probably, I, I'm, I'm not in their marriages, but probably because all of a sudden they had to make a decision whether or not to follow that greatness or to succumb to whatever it is that their spouse, you know, would rather have. Think about it. It's extremely important. Another thing that um, I want to point out is the three things that God definitely um, handed us when he created us. Mm. When he created us, he did three things. He shaped us, sure. all right? Yeah. So, and that's from Ephesians 2.10, uh, 2, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus, I'm sorry, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So if you're thinking that 
I, this whole purpose thing is a lie. There's no way, man. I, I mean, I, I figure it out as I go must be what my purpose is. Your purpose was predestined before you were born by God. He knows what it is. He, that's where your answer is. So you just need to ask him for it and be ready for what the answer is. And be ready to answer. Here I am, Lord. Use me. Mm. Not the one that you're, you hear what the purpose is and you're like, uh, anybody else out there? <laughs> so your purpose may not be what you've been spending your entire life pursuing. pursuing. It yeah. may not be that. Maybe it's completely so different. The earlier you focus on finding what your purpose is and knowing it and being confident about it, the better it is for you when you get married. And somebody said something about your purpose can evolve. Really oh, yes. Oh. I actually love that. Thank yes. you so much, Amal, me. That's yes. beautiful. It definitely can it evolve. evolve. Yes. Not change, yeah. but evolve. Yeah. That's two different things because some people may assume that also the purpose I have now may have uh, is totally different, has nothing at all to do with the one that is, you know, a lot of times they're linked. It's evolving. It's always going to be linked. It will grow. The, the, it's linked. The utilization of your purpose can change or, ch or take different forms based on different seasons. Where you are in life. Like, when you look at it holistically, it's it all points in the same direction. Yeah. Okay. The other thing God did was he called us. Right? He called you. Hebrews 3, 1. Brothers and sisters, you are holy partners in a heavenly calling. Yeah. He called us. Last but not least, he gifted us. Yes. First Peter 4, 10. Each of you has received a gift from God for, for serving others. Now you must be faithful to develop and use that gracious gift from God. Marriage is a partnership to fulfill your calling. Come on. Get in the right partnership, y'all. It's important, extremely important. All right, babe. And, and then before we move forward, I mean, just, just to share, you know, personal stories. Again, I, I, I think I've shared with probably most of you guys. When Tosi and I met, um, it, I, I'm actually, I count myself very, very lucky. Because you sound like I was some kind of uh, no, 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 not, not because you are. Y'all was a mess. Yeah. Don't be answering him. She's not. She wasn't an angel. I knew Jesus, but that was a mess. She wasn't an angel, but but she knew enough to where I couldn't come up to her with rubbish. I don't know if that makes sense, right? So I was coming from a place of rubbish. No, I, knew my I was coming from a place of finesse, right? Find figure out your way to every single thing. But when I met her, it was more okay. I see who you are, I like you, but you need to get your crap together. No, you better align with where does that make, Does that make is. sense? Like, I, you, you mm -hmm. need to get it together. Don't come up in here with that BS. I was okay? very straightforward she about straightforward. it. Look, I'm a <laughs> church girl, okay? So you better decide whether, like, you can't be with me if that's a problem. Literally, I spent maybe four days out of, I, I've always been that way. When I was younger, I spent more days in church than I do now. It's just something I enjoy. It's just who I am. So it was whoever I was going to marry could not have a problem with that. Yeah. Could not have a problem with me being somebody who sings in the church or stands on stage and speaks boldly about Christ. We cannot have a problem. I also was very clear that I, was, I knew that I was called to be open about my journey in life yeah. to others. And that's something I knew. A long time ago, I've always been that way. And so whoever I married could not be a private person, could not be somebody who say, I'm ah, sorry, you cannot tell that part of our story. You can only tell this one. No, it was all or nothing with me. And that was something we discussed very early on. I was like, this is where I'm going in life. I know at some point I'm going to be, you know, saying, speaking about my life because I'm passionate and I know that God has called me to help other people with my mistakes. Yeah. You got a problem with that, bro? If you do, <laughs> this ain't a girl for you. So that's, awesome. again, knowing your purpose. Um, real quick, I want to give you guys a practical way to be able to um, figure out whether your purpose aligns with your partner. I know some of you are already like, hey, Jesus, these people have scattered her <laughs> because this whole purpose is still now. <laughs> First, they said last week we're supposed to have all these 10 things that we should check. Now, again, they're telling us purpose, right? Y'all, pretty much write down Figure out what your purpose is, okay? Or the things that you, are, you, 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 you know in your spirit that God has deposited in you. Yeah. As a calling, as, as, as a gift, as something that will bring glory to him. Write it in a circle, right? The, the other person that you're dating or planning on dating, you should be asking that question within the first two dates. Asking, hey, what do you, what do you, think, what do you think your calling is in life? 
What do you think your goal? What do you think your 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 plans are regarding what God not, has given not you? Not what's your favorite color. Not your financial goals in life. Well, that's not what I'm asking yet. <laughs> we will get to that one. It's important too. But you know, what do you think your um, calling is yeah. in life? When they tell you those things, write it in another circle. Then make a is it Venn diagram they call it? Yeah. The two circles. See whether they overlap. Is there anything is in there his anything circle in there that, overlaps that matches your circle? Yeah. And the more your circles overlap, the more aligned your purpose probably is. And do it honestly too, because honestly. a lot of times when we when we when we meet somebody and we really oh, truly want that relationship, I, we're so uh, in love. we start to ignore the things that are glaring. Yep. The things that other people can see that it's that is a mistake or could be a, p a possible disaster, we tend to make, mis uh, we, excuses. We, we make excuses for them. And so even if it doesn't fit, you look at another word and you say, well, he has this, so he must mean that. No, if it don't fit, it don't, don't force fit. it. And again, remember, your deal breaker is not the same as our deal breaker or yeah. the person next door's deal breaker. We're not saying that if you don't check all of these boxes, check, check, check that you cannot have a marriage. Oh, you can have a marriage. You can be married for 50 years. You can be married for, oh Lord, I've been missing all of those. Yeah, we've been missing, we've been missing, we've been missing all the, the comments. comments. The comments. We're so stuck. sorry. I just noticed it wasn't Oh over. my God. <laughs> Let's see what we got. Um, it's ideal to find. Okay, okay. Uh, all right, let's, uh, let's, go, let's go back to the deal breakers. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody ready to tell anybody us ready to share the deal breakers? I see Miss Linda. Linda. Where? With Linda. It's you right there. Did she share her deal breakers? She's right? over there. Let's let's call them in. Nah, you gotta be careful because before you call girls now, because you know we may not have our face oh, on. Lord. This is not so, that kind of show, y'all. Anyways, <laughs> if. She, see, she said, no, nah. she, nah. she don't got her face on. Girl, I feel you. I had to put my face on. Right, tell, you. tell us what your deal breaker is then. You can type, type it in. in, yes. And while we're still talking about that, I don't want y'all, because I know some people just joined. You didn't join in the beginning. We did put out a challenge. Um, we do want to bless somebody with $50 um, um, at the end of the live show. If you can call in and give us five out of 10 of the rules that we listed last, last week. week. You cannot put it in the comment section. You have to call. You have to that, um, request, to to request to join. request to join, yeah. Did someone? Oh, wow, someone requested. Request All right, that. here it goes. I hope people want to talk about the purpose thing. <laughs> yeah, $50. Request to All right, here it goes. Hi, Wendy. Did you Hello. go listen to the whole, server, to the whole time, uh, discussion from Hello, last week? <laughs> Hey. <laughs> hey, how are you? Yeah. Uh, which one are you going for? The challenge? Are you going for the challenge or do you want to show your deal breaker? I'm going for the challenge. <laughs> All right. <She's> like, <laughs> I want free I know you two of the challenge. What is this? Spiritual <laughs> something. I don't know. Oh, wow. You got to have the five before you call, but, my sister. Huh? You got to have all five before you call. Go ahead. Let's hear your five. I don't know all five. But actually... <laughs> Sorry, my phone's like, I uh oh, the internet is hanging. Okay, there we go. Okay. 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 So, the thing is, this, it's not you. I wanted to go back to the whole purpose thing. That's actually, I had requested while you guys were talking about it. And I saw, oh, like, yeah, so sorry, we missed the movie. Yeah, no problem. So, because my thing is this like, before I got married, I really didn't know what my purpose was. I had an interest, but I wasn't mm -hmm. sure. I was mm -hmm. a bit all over the place, but I knew I was interested in certain things. But when I met my husband, we talked about what our interests are. We talked about what we'd love to do with our lives, just stuff like that. But it wasn't like a setting stone as to this is what my purpose is and this is what I'm going to ride with, you know. But I feel like talking about what your interest is in life in general is going to lead to like let's say maybe five years down the line if you discover like god places in your heart that this is what your purpose is what your calling is you're already on that same page to be like okay babe this is what i feel like god has placed in my heart this is where i want to actually pursue that purpose i feel like because i just feel like so many people don't even know what their purpose is even in their 40s that people are still searching for it. that so, actually is the problem sis the 
um, waiting for five years down the line for something that you could have done five years ago. So what we're saying is, and I want to be clear that what's your, um, what you like to do, or what was it? You said something, you used a word, you said. No, she knew, she knew the things that she, she I knew the things that I was interested in. Interest, like, yes, your interest. I was, I was interested, like when I was in grad school, lots of things were going on in my life and I was still trying to figure things out as for adulting, getting used to that whole routine of adulting right. and also getting to know myself and what I can offer in a marriage. I knew I was interested in photography and blogging and fashion. Mm -hmm. I know that's my interest, but at the same time I was working, you know, trying to make a living to like put things on the table. But when I met my husband Sunday, I talked to him, I said, okay, I'm working, but I also like fashion, blogging and photography. He knew that about me. I asked him on Instagram page. He, he knew that. Mm -hmm. But then as things evolve in life and we pray and getting God, getting God involved in the things that I'm interested in and the things that I feel like this is what I want to do with my life. I feel like now in my marriage, he already supports me. Now I feel like he, because I know he supports me. And I, would go to, I went to him and I told him, I said, this is what I actually feel like. I know deep down within me so strong that, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. Because I feel like sometimes, like, some people... No, go ahead, sis. Right. I, right. Go ahead. Now, I was going to say that some people do have that idea of what they want to do, but they might not know it's a purpose for them. So you might take through prayer and, like, submitting yourself to God to figure it out. But for me, though, like, I would say at least knowing what you're interested in and talking about those interests with whomever you're dating and just trying to know if that person would support those interests if that's what God wants you to do with your life right. or if it's just a hobby, that kind of stuff. All right. Thanks, Wendy. I'm going to answer your question once we uh, hang up. I want to be very clear um, real quick that interest and career are not the same thing as Let purpose. Me, yeah. Let me take on that. Let me yeah. take that on. So, so Wendy is talking about uh, you're, you're, I think you're, 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 you're mixing up yeah, hobbies, interests, and what I want to do for a living to, with purpose. and you're missing that with purpose. Purpose is not what I'm choosing it's to do. Glory. It's, it's what God, God placed me or put me on earth to do. The for his glory, let's right. be clear. So, so an example for me, right, is that I work in clinical research. I'm a research scientist. That's what I do for a living. And I love it and I enjoy every bit of it. But that's not my purpose. My purpose is to draw people towards God's kingdom. How do I do that? I need to submit myself to Christ. Then I need to obey his commandments, put him first. And then I need to do things such as this where I get to communicate, I get to be in front of people. That's not bringing in a dollar at all. But guess what? It brings eternal joy and satisfaction. And peace. That, and peace that I can't get from my nine to five. Yes. So that's more of my purpose. That's, if, I, if I have to pick between my circular job and my purpose, I give my circular job up in a heartbeat. That's the difference. So th those are the, you know, I, I just use myself as an example yeah. for, you know, better understanding. Just, again, it's great if you guys have gr the same or similar interests. It's great if you're, um, if that is the case, then all Christians have the same purpose. No. No. No, 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 Purpose the topic. Here we okay. Real no, we quick. Already this so real quick, it's seven fifty four, which means on Instagram in six minutes the call will get cut off. But again, just like last week, go ahead and call back. I mean, join back in because we'll we'll join we'll set ourselves back up again. Okay, I just wanted to throw that out there. Again, we still we also still have the um, challenge of fifty dollars to whoever is able to list by calling in five out of the 10 um, rules of dating that we gave last week. Um, you want us to be more specific. So more specific. So babe, tell, tell them your purpose. Let me I'll tell them how mine is actually a lot more specific than you think. Okay. Go ahead. So my purpose in life, I've always known. And when I, even when I went back to God and I clarified was primarily 
to worship him. I'm, I'm a worshiper. That is my, my number one calling. Worshiper, not just like general, like uh, with my life, but also in music. Those are, those are the things that I, now how I choose to use that, there are different ways because I may not be singing right now, but that is actually a channel in which I communicate with God. The other thing that God made clear to me was that I was going to definitely use my mistakes in life to help other people come to him. My mistakes, uh, specifically the things that I have been through, my challenges, the, the, the things I've experienced in life. That was what my calling, I've been, I've been put in this earth to not shut my mouth about those things. To actually be a voice for people to know that, yes, you can be broken and still God can use you. That's my own. If the, I think somebody... No, no, okay, continue. Through pastoring, I was going to say that for you. Event planning too. Event planning for me is actually not a... Oh, it's not my purpose. It's one of the ways in which set. it's a skill set that I have. I'm an organizer. I, I'm skilled in that way. My mind um, plans things before my mouth even, like I, I plan things before anybody else has thought of it. That's a skill set I have. It has helped me in my calling in life because one of the things that has happened is through that through me being very organized, I was able to serve. Yes, it's a gift. It's a gift, right. There you Thank go. You. I've been able to serve in a church. Hence, my gift made way for me. They were able to see that I was organized. I, I have a planning skill. It put me in position of being able to run service for the church in that way. And prior to that, I have always ministered through song. In that way, I am able to, whether I am physically the one singing the song or coordinating the choir from the behind the scenes to get them to sing the songs. I'm still working musically with worship, direct, indirectly right now in my church. I am also able to speak to women through my, again, all of my, my gifts and my experiences led me to where it is that I'm able to now sit in the center of what God's purpose has been for my life from the very beginning. I never actually thought that I would have pastor in front of my name. That was never something that I, I thought was going to, you know, be part of it. Mm -hmm. But the, that being added to the front of my name has allowed me a platform to now speak and people would listen to what I have to say. Not that they won't listen without, but again, the journeys, as you said earlier, somebody said it has evolved yeah. over time to where now... I'm able to sit in the center, boldly be able to talk about what it is I've been through. And people can look and be like, okay, she's not that bad. She's managing, she's trying in life. So this thing is possible. That's my calling. So, so I think we should, um, there's, yeah. there's, there's more to be said. As, as far definitely, as we, gotta, we gotta do a whole um, purpose thing. We definitely need to talk about that. I don't um, know how much questions there was. Uh, no, was no, just, uh, just looking at the comments. Lots of comments. We can't read all yeah. of that tonight. Or Let's keep going. We're not gonna get to where we wanna we get to. But definitely, um, for the Spaces team, please take note that's something we definitely need to talk about. Yeah. All right. Purpose and finances, I think, was the finance, financial distribution or whatever. That also came up. So Spaces team, if you're on the, um, on the live show, please note that so that we can make a, a, a show out of it for, yeah. for the folks. All right. So let's move on. We were on. Um, and, also, and also, just keep in mind, right? Yeah. When we say having your purpose online, mm. for those who haven't figured it out in your day, nobody's saying, go break up with your boyfriend. Or go just make it a party. Party. with your with the person you're courting. All we're saying is things will be a lot easier if, if you, you already know. figured it out. If you figured out your purpose, it makes it easy for you to be able to select a partner, for you to be able to select a partner that is going to help you amplify what your purpose is. There is no right or wrong. Mm. Nobody's saying go 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 press reset button and go do it all over again. Mm -hmm. We're just saying if you were to do it in a hierarch uh, hierarchical order, mm -hmm. you should probably know your purpose before. It will uh, help. It will help. And if you it. don't know it, make it a priority. Exactly. Just make it a priority. Understand that if that is the thing you are pursuing, finding my purpose in life, and the partner is secondary, following along with you, is easier than pursuing the guy or the girl and not knowing what your purpose is. Yeah, and Someone asked if the church can host Financial Peace University. It's already on schedule to be done by God's grace. We are still trying to figure out how to transition everything that is 
um, a live class or course into online purposes with this season that we're in, but it's on our calendar to be done. Um, That's good. Go ahead, That's really good. All right, so the next one um, is, drum roll, we must both be emotionally healthy. Oh, I like so because last yeah. week when we talked about emotional attraction, whoop, somebody. All right, where's our family? Okay, sorry, y'all. Where you guys at? Technical difficulty here. No, not technical. It was, it shut us out like we <laughs> promised. Man made difficulty. We're back. All right, we're back. We're back. Let's give it a minute for you guys to all yeah, um, join back in. We'll give it a minute in. for everybody to get back on. Oh, we have two people who have requested to come live. I'm not sure if it's for the challenge or uh, to join in the conversation, but we will definitely. Let's let us let you all in before we go to the next one. We'll, we'll give everybody some time to get back on. Thank Erica, you. Thank you. For Erica, coming thank back you on. so much. Erica said she almost had a heart attack. Baby girl, I warned you though. <laughs> That's we, why we give the dis disclaimer. We gave, you, we gave you the heads up. <laughs> after, All right. after one hour, Instagram kicks you out. So Nigerian Nightmare 34. Ooh, interesting name. Nigerian Nightmare. Yeah, was the first one. Girl, I don't know if it's a girl or a guy. Yeah, was the first. They had. So let's get them in because they said they know their answer. Nigerian Nightmare. I need to know who this is. Me too. I'm curious, actually. I bet it's a pretty face behind that scary name on purpose. Look at the guy. <laughs> Girl! Oh! <laughs> you know the Nigerian nightmare? Yeah. Why are you trying to scare us, though? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Interesting. So you, you have the answers to the challenge? You want to yeah. answer the challenge question? Yes. Let's yes, do yes, it. Yes. Okay. So um, from my notes, I have physical attraction, spiritual attraction, mental and emotional attraction, um, okay. financial attraction, um, then some other things you said was pace yourselves and choose not to touch. Okay, so all of the attraction and financial wasn't one of it, but all of the attraction was actually one. I was just gonna say, I don't know who told you about financial attraction. <laughs> oh, really? No, 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 no. We talked about, we did talk about um, t being very open about what your financial status was. Oh, yeah. And I think a lot of people uh, um, took that as financial yeah. attraction, but yeah. but but. <laughs> Um, you got all of the attractions, so I could give you a chance to try to list the rest. So physical, spiritual, mental, mental. and emotional, you, you definitely nailed it, but they were all one. One, that okay. Attraction. Then you said, I'm sorry, what was the other stuff you said? Um, pace yourselves. Pace yourself, yeah, that's good. Yes, pace yourself, yes. Choose not to touch. Choose yes, not to touch. yes. Um, oh, and I think that might be... Two more, you can do this. You can do it. <laughs> Um, let me see because I have my notes. Sorry, I love that you have notes. I'm, I'm proud that you so have notes. I'm gonna give you time. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, sorry, one second. You find it? One second. People are rooting for you. So come on, Lola, bring all, bring all the bacon. Come on now, um, fifty dollars. Oh, you said you could no. phone a friend. Can you, you want to phone a friend? But then there's somebody else what? waiting to get in. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know if this was a point. Intense praying and fasting. Yes. Intense yes. praying and fasting. Yes. Number four. Continue the dialogue. Yes. Talk, talk, talk. 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 Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys, because <laughs> I really need this money. Well, I, great job. Do me a favor. DM your, do you have Zell? Yes. Or, good. DM your Zell information to Spaces. Just send it to us. Yeah. And at the end of the call, once we're free, we'll send it to you. We will send you $50. You just okay. won yourself $50. Bucks. Excellent job, Lola. Thank you. Bye. Great job. <laughs> Oh, that was great. So we have a winner. All right, y'all. So we have a winner. Let's move back on. Yeah, let's, let's get right back on. All right. So going back to our next point, I, I mentioned it right before we got caught off by uh, Instagram. Instagram. It says, Instagram. We must be emotionally healthy. Notice it didn't say we must be emotionally perfect. Yeah. And I want us to be very clear on this. Yes. Not emotionally perfect, but emotionally healthy. You're going to it's important to keep in mind that we're all sinners and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. And as such, 
you are going to marry a sinner. So it is not in your place or my place to judge anybody. Mm -mm. But there are some things that as believers, we have to watch out for. We have to make sure. All are broken. Yeah, I already and told I love, you. I love how this reads. It says all are broken, but some are, are more, more broken. broken. Avoid the emotional unhealthy partners. Listen to that. Avoid the emotionally unhealthy partners. Emotionally they will unhealthy. be ready for marriage when they are discharged from the health clinic. Yep. How about that? They will be ready for marriage. So just because someone is not emotionally there. Or emotionally healthy. Or emotionally doesn't healthy. mean that they are rule out forever. Yeah, they just, just rule out for right now. They'll be ready when they get discharged from the hospital. That's yeah, all. when they discharge, you know, <laughs> they're still sick. You know, probably sicker than you. Let them heal. Yeah. And when they're yeah. done healing, let's do it. Absolutely. Get married. Because trust me, you do not want to move forward with an un emotionally unstable person. We didn't say perfect because nobody's perfect. Yeah. We if you're looking for perfection, you're not going to find it, by the way. Oh, you would remember. Just so you know. Just, you know, be able to pinpoint those things from the get-go and figure out which one of these things am I okay with. Yeah. Which one of these things am I able to work with and also be open to to walking with people along the way right there's some things that you can be friends with somebody yeah. for a long time it's okay to be friends with them while they're healing while they're growing you don't have to marry them yeah you don't have to marry them. marriage is a lifetime commitment you know we talked about that last week pace yourself because in time you can see are they growing are they moving from ICU to med surge? I'm sorry, I'm a nurse, so I use some um, healthcare <laughs> terms, you know? Are they moving from ICU to PCU to med surge and then eventually being discharged? Or are they going from ICU to being put on a vent and then now they're giving them uh, every dop <laughs> dopamine drip, every drip in order to keep them alive from vent to hospice you know i i i, I on hospice now you know someone said like like someone who tested positive for coronavirus and presently isolated yes. hey, hey, you know yeah, or are they being, or are they like boris johnson being wheeled out of icu <laughs> step down you know heading to step down if that's the case you stay friends with them you stay encouraged knowing that they are growing let me tell you, by their fruits, you shall know them. There's nobody that can fool you with fruits. I am telling you, there's nobody that can fool you. If you pace yourself in time, it will start to come out small by small. The tree will start to bear fruit small by small. And then when the fruit grows, that's why they say by their fruit. You're supposed, no tree grows a fruit overnight. Yeah. So if you meet somebody today, you now want to marry them tomorrow. You're yeah. marrying them yeah, without... Be, re be ready for whatever... Be ready for whatever the fruit they bring out by the time you guys are married for one year because you didn't even wait for the fruit to grow before yeah. you married them. Yeah. Let the fruit come out so that you can see who you're about to marry yeah, and you can decide, you can make an informed decision whether or not you want to stay a hospice nurse or an ER nurse that's just kicking them out quick, quick, quick and making your decision. <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> All right. All right, next okay. one. All right, so, um, uh, so uh, before we move right ahead, deal breakers. Um, anybody want to still share the deal breakers? Anybody want to jump in and Ooh, share some I of I think Shelon Shelon had asked earlier. Let me let me get her back on if she's interested. I don't know if she was calling for the. Oh yeah. I don't know if you were calling for the um, challenge or if you were calling to share your deal breaker. If it's the deal breaker, connect on. Let's talk. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, because I was twisting my hair when you called me, uh, so I couldn't touch my phone. Because you know we all know you weren't wearing that hat at oh, home. Of course not. Home. I just finished doing my twist. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But Hi, I'm low-key um, salty because I had my answers for um, the challenge. Oh. oh, no. But it's okay because half of them came from Lola anyways. So she used my... <laughs> She used me to take notes last week, so I just went to her messages. <laughs> oh, so I'm so glad that nice. she got it then, because she really go. deserved it. Um, All right, go ahead. But, you have deal breakers, and if you want to share them, yeah. at least um, one of some of your deal breakers. So I think one would be um, if if you're not an honest person. And I know that, you know, we're not 100% honest all the time, mm -hmm. but honesty is just so important to me. And if I feel like you're not honest, I feel like I can't trust you. And I don't have the energy to be 
checking for you like oh were you really like asking 15 questions for one thing like when you say yes let your yes be yes let your no be no in so in, are you saying integrity yes well yeah integrity but also honest yeah integrity but also honesty even with <laughs> with um with with how you feel about things like i'm not gonna ask you 15 times how do you really feel like I, I expect you to be honest about everything about your feelings about things about even, even if it hurts even when it hurts yes Ooh, I love that I love one as long as, that in. as long as you commit to be the partner that is ready to receive the truth yes because I wouldn't any ask judgment. if I'm not ready to hear an answer. <laughs> so don't ask if you're not ready to hear the answer. I appreciate it. And even, and even with their struggles, mm. because, because here's, here's one thing that, I think this is actually a test of how deep and how intimate relationships can be. Mm. When your partner is able to come to you with their personal struggles. And no judgment. Even when that personal struggles can point back at you mm. and make you feel inadequate. Mm. Mm. Go think about it's it. True. Yeah. All right. Thanks, you. Good Bye. Show. Love you. <laughs> love you, too. <laughs> All right. So. Awesome. Someone had new, I don't know who's under the new Covenant House uh, account, but they, they had a question there, and I want to I wanna make sure I answer it. Um, well, no, we can't catch all this right questions. there. No, no, no. It's a good one. It's a good one because okay. I want to make sure that we're not giving any kind of misconceptions. It says, What do you say to people who have seen quick, short relationships work in marriage? I want to make sure that you understand that everything we're saying about pacing yourself now, it's not one size fits all. No, never. We're not saying that if you met somebody yesterday and you married them today, that it would not um, be a, 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 a good marriage. No. Remember, I told you. That there are marriages that have made it 50 years. As a matter of fact, um, we, we have a good, good, friend, a good friend of ours um, that actually aired the marriage ministry for Jesus House Dallas. Their story is quite unique. They met. I think it was in a matter of maybe married, three months or something like that. Three months or so. And they have a beautiful, amazing marriage. Again. But again, that's, that's their story. Right? And I'm sure if you ask them, there must have been a lot of work that yes. they had to put in after those short months yes. to get them to where they have the um, intimacy that they have now. And this is, of course, an assumption. We're not in their marriage, so I don't know. But one of the things I want to tell you is that it's, it's the, the level of quality of the marriage that you want that we're talking about right now. Do you want to go in and experience the fullness and the depth and the blessings and the complete package that God has in store for that you. God designed marriage to if be. If you want to go in with that, pace yourself. Again, we're not saying that if the person is, in, is, is imperfect or, you know, a little cracked here or cracked there, that you may not be able to end up in a blossomed marriage later down the line. Like I told you, when we met, my husband was nowhere near perfect at all. No way, and, I, and we're not going for perfect, right? It was not. But one thing I did notice was uh, the more I got to know him, the more he was moving from ICU to PCU to med surge. Which one is PCU? It's the step down unit. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately being discharged. I'm sorry. I'm and now, and now, now he's heading a whole psych unit as the, as the doctor teaching it. You see my point? So my point is... <laughs> Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Dave, allow me to use what I understand to explain this thing. It, it's working. Hopefully, y'all get my, my, my drift. So, we are not um, don't, uh, saying that you cannot oh, get... this is a patient care unit. Thank yeah. you for that. We're not <laughs> saying that you cannot get the ultimate experience if it's a short courtship. There are mm -hmm. lots of great Christian marriages Absolutely. that were short courtships and but I, I bet you go ask them. They were very intentional in that yeah. short time. Yeah. They weren't just using the normal social uh, description for la -di da let's just date. Oh, I love you, I love you, let's marry, that is it. It's okay, you can do that one. But I bet you if you compare your marriage, the rush, rush, rush one, you did not even know what was going on, to the ones who were very intentional, it will be very different on the inside. Yeah. Marriage, eh? On the outside, all of us wearing on the outside, put makeup. On the outside, look like Mrs. So, 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 or Mr. Whatever on the outside. When you really want to know, quality is on the inside. 
dice with the quality. All righty. Well, All right. On. Let's move on. So what's the next one? Ooh. Okay, so we decided to break down emotional health because that was where we were. We said yes. you both have to be emotionally healthy, especially because last week when we talked about emotional attraction, a lot of people, like, I think the comment section just went crazy. So we, um, when we, when we um, dug into um, this uh, sermon, one of the parts that we were excited about was the emotional sermon. health. It was a sermon um, from Rick Warren. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so we were excited about this section and we wanted, uh, wanted to share that to with you guys. Down, yeah. So um, a partial checklist of emotional, emotional health. Yeah. And, and, I'm, and this is a, like, non-negotiables. No, these are non-negotiables. This is a way where you know so I, I, I assume the next question will be how do You're I know, welcome, so how do I know house. if someone is emotionally, emotionally healthy? healthy? That would be the question. And this is a check. These are the answers. Of the emotional okay. balance of the person. These are non-negotiables. Please write it down. We may ask you these next week for another $50 giveaway. Mm -hmm. Hint, hint. <laughs> I'm not saying it'll be this one, but you never know. All right. Number one, I'm going to take that one. No uncontrolled anger. Come on. Note. I did not say no anger because we do get angry. We all, we all, have, we all get angry. We all have from, unless you're like me. You do get angry. You just, <laughs> you just are like so like chill. It drives me nuts. It's so chill. It drives Ladies, me nuts. Ladies, you see, when you're chilled, it's a problem. When you're not chilled, it's a problem. <laughs> anyway, moving Chill right doesn't on. mean they don't get angry. Okay. <laughs> the question is, I mean, the point is no Uncontrolled, no uncontrolled anger. anger. Yeah. Underline, I see the Nigerian nightmare says she's taking notes. Underline uncontrolled. Yes. So you definitely do not want somebody who is hot tempered. And I'm going to read from the Bible. Bible Pro, uh, Proverbs 22 24. NIV says, Do not make friends with a hot tempered man. Do not, not associate, associate with one, one who is easily angered. angered. Yes. Uncontrolled anger reveals deep insecurities. Yes. And much worse. Yes. So this is the example that Rick Warren used in the, in, in, in the Bible study. It was, he said, a cup, when a cup is full to the brim with water, if you tap it a little bit, it'll spill. It'll spill over. It'll spill over. When somebody is full of anger and resentment, one small nudge like it's the this. same thing. Same exact thing. They will any they little take it quote, out any little word you say, anything. If you walk wrong, if you breathe wrong. Their own insecurities because of their internal, their, their struggles with, their battles. with anger yes. and resentment. And they take it out on you. And you so don't want that life. You want to know the best way to um, avoid spousal abuse? Do not marry them. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely, when you were dating, they showed, or courting, the signs. They showed those signs. Maybe yeah. not to you, maybe to their sister, maybe to their friend. Easily angered. Every small thing they're I triggered. Take, I take it they've, show, they've shown it to you. They've actually. showed it. They've show, trust yeah. me, they have. We yeah. just always say, but he loves me, but she loves me. Mm. She threw her phone at you and it broke. And you went immediately to go and buy another one it's from the iPhone. It's not normal store. for someone to be breaking phone on the or remote or slam the television on the floor. It's not all normal. Because, all because you asked that is that the dress you are wearing today? That's it. That was it was a question, <laughs> just question. Or oh, what time would you be back? And it it became yeah. Bad, bad, that's those this whatever. <laughs> and your theory is, but they love me. So I will yeah, marry him because he would enough. he would never do that to me. Or she she when but when she's not angry, she's an angel. She's the sweetest person. When she's all. not angry, she's uh Okay. Continue. Continue. <laughs> all right, next one. All right, that's you take the next one. All right, good, good, good. So the next one here is going to lead us into probably one of those other topics that we need to but uh, we're not gonna dwell on those other topics we're, we're, not gonna, yeah, yeah. we're gonna have another uh, one the person you marry must not have any addictions i repeat they must not have any addictions don't associate with people who Guys, you know those girls who just, they're life of the party, but every time you go out, they have to drink too much. You did that one. And you have to help them to get in the car. They have to. You gotta carry a few. Let, let me give you one that's, uh, that might be a little touchy. People who eat too much, 
Did you know that it could be a form of an addiction for people who eat too much, people who can't control what they put in? The Bible has a lot to say about The Bible has to say a lot about that. People who are who have drug addictions, you know, a lot of you guys would be like, oh no, he just he just smokes weed. He just likes to indulge in weed smoking every now and then. Weed doesn't hurt nobody. Until it hurts you. Until it hurts you. Ah, people, oh, your kid. People who have pornography addictions. Mm -hmm. Ah, people who have let's let me give you a kicker. Video game addictions. Be shocked. Cell phone addiction. Cell phone, Instagram. Uh, hey, Facebook, babe. they don't even look Snapchat up. Snapchat addictions. Finger pushing addiction. Uh, oh, oh, a better one. Better yet. People who have spending addictions. That's a big one. <laughs> so you just shopping and, 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 and the disguise that one in, in, oh, I'm just fashionable. I just like nice things. So you have 500 pairs of shoes <laughs> yeah. and 60. Let, let, me, let me expose myself here. I was one of those people. I used to be one of those Ooh, people. Were you addicted? Oh, though? trust me, I was addicted. <laughs> yeah, I, see, I'm one of those people that don't just like nice things. I like some every, addiction. Yes, there's every some addiction. nice thing. Anything that you do too some much of addiction. is yes, an addiction. That's a good one. Too much uncontrolled, it becomes your God. It becomes yes. what your focus is. It becomes the thing that you pay your most attention to. It becomes where your heart is, your yes. love is. You, you design your calendar and your life around yes. it. And the reason why this is a big deal is because we, you are going to cut somebody said that's mine. Mind you. Okay, that's a good job. The only thing that should have that much power over you should be God. Should be God. And when, whatever we submit to like that will take away his time, his affection for you. So the question is, are you willing to that compete with those things? Affection for and him. also your affection for him. Vice he will versa. always love you. Yeah, vice versa. You just won't know it. Think about, think about people who, who just have uncontrolled spending habits. They're going to run you down. They're going to run your finances you're down. Be in debt. It becomes a problem. You're going to end up in debt. And then your quality of life diminishes as a result. Is that they got to buy want? everything they want. With money they, don't, they have don't have to impress people they don't like. Exactly. People who don't like them. Or people that who don't is see emotional them. unhealthiness. Unhealthiness. Yeah, right absolutely. there at its peak. So that's, that's a good one. So we'll jump right into the next one. All right. right. The next, no, non-negotiable that defines emotional unhealthiness is no bitterness. Oh. You cannot marry somebody who, as in, absorbs, is holding bitterness, especially if the bitterness is linked to a previous relationship. Mm, or their childhood. Or their or parents. Their family, their parents. Let me tell you something. Somebody who cannot discuss or cannot handle or cannot um, talk about um, or cannot speak positively about previous experiences, eventually that thing's going to spill out on you. Yes. yes. Whatever it is, their resentment that they're holding is the same as, as, as similar with anger. Whatever you resent, you resemble. Yeah. So from the Bible, yeah, whatever you resent, you re resemble. Yes. Whatever you resist, persist. Yes. So stop resenting, start releasing. Yes. Any kind of um, bitterness or resentment, if a sign of emotional healthiness is that you know how to release it. Yes. We all are. I mean, experience um, um, hurt at one point or the other in our lives. People hurt us. We hurt people, whatever. It's being able to let it go that shows that you are emotionally healthy. Healthy, absolutely. Holding on to it forever is a sign of emotional unhealthiness. Yes. And if they can do that with other people, they most likely will do, do that it with you. you. When you hurt them, and, and trust me, no one can hurt you more than the people you love, the yep. people that are closest to you. And there's a very high likelihood that your wife is going to hurt you at some point or your husband is going to hurt you. So then the question goes to, if I ever hurt you, how do you respond? Are we ever going to move past it? Mm -hmm. If we don't move past it, we have problems down yeah. the line. Yeah. So Hebrews 12, 15 says, make sure you all have experienced the grace of God so that bitterness doesn't take root and grow mm. because that causes much trouble and will corrupt you. So when the Bible tells you, bitterness will cause plenty trouble and will corrupt you. So take notes on that. Definitely. Now, under bitterness is also how they treat their parents. It's very important. 
whether or not they like their parents, whether or not their parents were good parents or not, doesn't matter. The Bible says, honor your father and mother so that your days Maybe shall long. be long. Yes. God did not say, honor their sin, honor their behavior, honor their belief. He says, honor them because they, they, they were the reason you, you came into being. God chose them. No matter how bad you think they are, God chose them. So what do you say to those people who say, you don't know my parents? You know, you don't know what they've done. It, what, you know, all the things I went through. It doesn't matter because those two people had just the perfect DNA to make you. Mm. Your job is just to honor them. Honor them, not their sin. Honor them, not their you know, craziness, but honor them because that's what God has commanded us to do. Wow. Now, when you can, if you can do that, then your days will be long. And most likely if I'm married to you and your days are long, then my days are long. So you see how this whole shall two work together unless they align? And the days are all long. <laughs> yep. So that's it for bitterness. Definitely no bitterness. Yes. And, and that's not to say that they don't have things that they're, that they're struggling with when you guys meet. But again, a sign of emotional healthiness is when someone is able to pour out their heart to you and you can hold their hands together and you can pray about it and you can help them can walk that path. It. Yeah, you can that's, cry about it. Something. It's okay to cry to <laughs> get past it. Yeah, and, and be able to move past it. So sometimes God might bring you someone who, who needs your help uh, overcoming some, some emotional, emotional issues, okay? All right. So to the next one here, um, Again, if anybody wants to talk about their personal deal breakers, feel free to... Yes, we want to hear your deal breakers. Let us know. We'll, we'll, we'll put you on and, uh, and hear your, your, uh, your views. Yep. But the next one is... Uh, they did not. You don't want anyone who is selfish. Selfish. Uh, and I know this is, uh, <laughs> this, is, this is funny because most of us have selfishness uh, no, we wrap it in underline and inside us. The, the human in nature is designed. Nations are selfish. You would see a, a country like America go help another country, not because of their humanitarian... Uh, but what they will uh, get uh, from it? Yeah, because they do, there's something else that's tied to it, right? Uh, so it's in our nature to be selfish, but you don't want people who... Her selfish. Proverbs 28, 25 says, selfish people cause trouble. Mm -hmm. Selfish people cause trouble. The number one cause of conflict in, marriage. in marriages is selfishness. Selfishness in finances and how I see myself, how I think that I am better than my partner. I think so. My needs are better than my partner's yeah, needs. I think Wendy said earlier in the comments about yeah. um, not her deal breaker was somebody who thought only about themselves. about themselves. They talk yes. so much. Everything becomes a lecture because it's all focused on them. And that goes, that goes back selfishness. to the root of that is selfishness. People, they want what they want. They, yeah, and they want it at that time. And, and it doesn't matter if you're running want. the house down. It doesn't matter if we're going into debt. I want a new car and I'm just going to get me. a new car. It's all about me. Yep. I'm just going to get it. Pay on loan, drive it into the driveway and, babe, I just got a new car. Can we afford it? No, we didn't talk about it. I just wanted a new car. That was me. It's I. I <laughs> so know. people like that are going to ruin you. People who do not get along with others or are only interested in themselves. Going back to what Wendy mentioned earlier. They uh, will disagree. They, yeah, yep. Yep. It says that Proverbs 18 one says people who do not get along with others are only, or are only interested in themselves. They will disagree with what everyone else knows is right. And that's the thing. Have you ever met someone who they're talking to you everyone around them knows what they're saying sounds <laughs> stupid everyone knows what you, the point they're making is dumb but they would fight that point to no, their they gotta hear their voice. because they just gotta hear their own voice it's like dude like i can't deal with you emotional <laughs> unhealthiness yes that's yes. a sign right there all right the next one is not greedy mm. look what love love is giving Jesus, God is love. And God showed his love to us by giving his son. Yes. Giving is like at the bedrock. Being able to give is at the bedrock of being a Christian. Being a Christian yeah. So one of the things, I mean, the Bible says in Proverbs 15, 27, a greedy man brings trouble to his family. You marry somebody who's greedy, yeah. you're going to end up 
with wahala. Reason being, a greedy person most likely is going to never see the end of their wants. They're going to continue wanting. There's always something they want. They're going to pursue, pursue, pursue till you guys end up in debt. And, and let, me, let me say this to, to, to everyone here. Greediness a lot of times is very, very difficult to spot. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it disguises itself in ambition. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you meet someone, you meet a guy who is just driven. And that in itself is... It's a good thing. It's sexy to look at. Like, yo, you are just driven. You just want to get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. But then when but it where, comes to where do we yeah. stop? Where does it get to the point where we're like, you know we're, what? We're content. We're happy. We're, we're happy. Good. We have contentment. We're okay. And if we don't get that next deal, you know what? It's cool. When he doesn't get the next deal and he's pissed off and he's moody and he's breaking things around. And he's spending credit card that y'all don't take have notes. to try to get the next bigger deal. Again. Yeah, to try to impress people so they can give him the contract. Just constantly going, constantly wanting more, 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 mm -hmm. collecting more. None of this is to glorify God by any means. It's just about collecting, collecting, collecting. Yes. When does it stop? Yes. The Bible tells you, brings you trouble, brings trouble it to his family. Brings you trouble. And how do you know when someone is not greedy? It should be the next question. It should be the thought process. How do I know that? People who are kind, who genuinely have kindness in their heart. Kindness and generosity, and, 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 and generosity are the measures. Ge people who are generous, people who are kind. When you take those, they don't go hand in hand with greediness. They just don't. Mm -hmm. People who are generous with their time, with their money, with their life. People who you can call and you can rely on and will drop what they're doing in the middle of the night to come come bail you out to of whatever it is to support you to talk you those, through whatever situation those you're going are the through. people you're looking for you're looking for generosity right. and kind so why do we want to marry a generous person the bible says in proverbs eleven twenty five, a generous man will prosper yes. he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed, be refreshed. Yes. and then about kindness the bible says a kind-hearted woman gains respect and a kind man benefits himself but cruel uh people bring trouble on themselves. Yes. Uh, Proverbs eleven seventeen. So that's it. Generosity, generosity and kindness is definitely something you are looking for. People who have kindness and generosity, like Sami. Oh, let's see. <laughs> Who's that? Uh, Tony. Who have, oh, that's cute. Thanks, hey. Tony. <laughs> hey, we're trying to practice what we preach. We try. It's difficult. It's, it's super hard, but you got to do it. We have to keep fighting and keep, and keep pushing it. forward. Do it for God. Do it for God. Again, we're trying to move from the ICU to being Message, discharged, right? To be discharged, yes. There you go. All right. All right. And uh, the next um, says, the sign of emotional um, health. Yes. And the next sign of emotional health says an emotionally, an emotionally healthy an emotional, person yes. tells the truth. Uh, Shell mentioned this earlier uh, when she talked about she needed someone who, who can give their word and she can, she can take it to the bank and cash it in, right? Uh, who said... They say you're blushing. It's blushing, right? Yeah, I'm turning. I'm turning green. <laughs> green? That's yeah. envy. I turn. I turn green when I blush. Oh God. <laughs> but yeah. Um. Yeah. So an emotional person tells the truth all the time. Yeah. Love is an based, emotionally healthy person. Yeah. Love is based on trust, and trust can only be based on you guess you guessed it on truth. I can't trust you if you can't tell me the truth, even when it hurts. Even when it sounds bad, I need you to be able to speak the truth to me at all times. If you don't tell me the truth, how can I trust you? How can I, how can I believe what you're saying? Mm -hmm. If I have to go check, every time you say good morning, I have to go outside and go make sure that it's morning. We got a problem. All right? Yeah, don't marry someone with no integrity. It's important. Integrity is important. Yes. If they say something, let it be that. And... Um, Deal breakers. Okay, so one of the things we want to say about deal breakers so far. Now, your personal deal breakers, like we said earlier, um, are totally up to you. You're the one who knows your capacity, right? So your personal ones are totally up to you. That's the ones we've been asking you guys to share. A lot of the ones we've shared today are the biblical deal breakers. They're the ones that are foundational. They're the ones that would allow yourself um, be exposed to this level of intimacy that is like so deep that is awesome that you know that you guys are have become soulmates right 
Notice that the ones we listed today did not include any physical attributes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we told you last week that physical attraction was important. Yes, it is. It's not going off the list of the things that are important. because It's again, actually the number one thing. It's, it's the first step. It's inside attraction. Yeah. Because you cannot tell me that you'll be happily married to somebody that you find repulsive. repulsive. You can't tell me that you'll be happily married to somebody that you are not like drawn to that you don't drawn to. yes mm. like that you that does not like you That's know word. do you tinini you know huh what's that <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> i don't know what that was <laughs> oh lord <laughs> she, she doubled down on that one I don't know what yeah, my is. baboon comment, y'all. No, 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 no. Like I said, if you and the baboon were the last thing on earth, the baboon might just do you tinini. Yeah, it will do. It's not my. It will after. It only takes a little bit. It will do you tinini again. It's important. You gotta have that. But the foundational ones have nothing to do with physical attributes. Let me tell you something. The money can fix ugly. Money can fix. You know, fine. I think she's be too honest tonight. Money can fix. He does not know how to dress. Why are you pointing at me? Not you. I'm just you. Oh, know. okay. Money can oh, my. fix. <laughs> Don't be pointing. Her, her hair is not a guinea. Ah, you put money can fix all that one. <laughs> so that is why it's not a foundational something. Do you understand? It's not important right now. Physical stuff. At least be attractive. I don't know that money can fix some. Ah, some. Let me. I what don't want to. I don't want to say what's on my mind. What plans are you living on? <laughs> Money can fix it. Trust me. Trust me. Just by the time you marry them, you throw small, small dollars at it like this. They will just be like, "Oh my God!" <laughs> Again, those are things that come after the fact. I can't. Right now, focus on the things that money cannot fix. Money cannot fix a selfish person. Money so cannot money can fix it. In you. <laughs> ah, where? Ah, money can fix. Let me tell you, there's some things you can get. You will get the tinny, but you can see that they are not really like perfect. You know, maybe the way you tucked in his shirt into the trouser is not your style. You understand what I'm saying? That kind of one, money can fix. You know, you can fix that one. So don't focus on that. His shoe is last season's uh, uh, design, not this year. Money can fix that one. Don't worry about that. But when you talk to him, the attraction is there. You can feel it. It's very palpable. Uh -huh. That is marriageable content. Will start. It's just the start. It's like. It's like step half. Then we now, oh yeah, who do you worship? Where is your spiritual uh, al 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 allegiance? Yeah. Who do you pledge your spiritual allegiance to? That's good. And how do you exercise it? That is the next thing. Ah, money, God bless you. Who said that? Values love. Money can be brought. You are feeling me. You are speaking my language. I have seen money change things. I'm done tonight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. money can be brought. It can be brought. But they can't fix the The people who know, the people who That's know. true. It's definitely not fixing the internal That's why we're internal focusing demons. on the internal demons, the, the internal things, because that one money cannot fix it. If you like throw all the money you want, if she be win, she be win, she will come out. That's my point. All right, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Romantic feelings, sexual attraction, they're extremely important. Yes. Again, if they were the most important things, Hollywood marriages would be our example to follow. The most beautiful people are in Hollywood. The most, uh, they yeah. know how, they can act emotional something for you, and yeah, that you'll be watching it and you'll be crying. And you'll be asking yourself, why am I crying? This thing is not real. Mm. So they actually know how to portray this romantic something very but well. You, but you look at their personal lives. Huh? And they look like, oh my God, we're all comparing our family members and our, everybody to, to these people. We keep saying that, but she does not look like Beyonce, but he does not look like, uh, who is the guy that they are looking at? I don't know. Ask them. You get my point. Who are you? Who are you are comparing your, the ones that you are seeing, the regular normal people, to them. But if you look at their marriages, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it it's, cannot it's last to say. And the ones that are managing to last, if you look well, like I said, it's not the outside though, it's the inside. If you look well, what is the can, quality? You, you can tell marriage. the quality. Yeah. So that's uh, that's a big one. So there are great things, but not great enough to sustain a great marriage. That's the point I'm trying to make. So, baby, Absolutely. how do we end a dead end dating? Because now we finished talking. Now I know some of you are now like Kai, that so, <laughs> the boy that I've been putting my hope in. Yes. Oh, 
<laughs> okay, Joy, jo Joy knows all the, all the up. Oh, somebody, oh, Joy knows all Idris the guys. Idris Elba. Elba ah. Ryan Reynolds. My okay, dear. thank you. You will not find them in Dallas, so, so don't, you know, you get my point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing, I'm, I'm being silly now. I think I'm being way too silly. She's, but she's, she's having way too much fun with <laughs> On this. a more serious note, I think after we've said all of these things and we're done with all the main pointers, yeah, you probably are, some of you may be looking at your re current relationship and, and 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 realizing that you might be in a relationship that you might have to reevaluate. Yeah, actually, actually, not that you realize. I think it's important that you 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 really evaluate your relationship. For those people who are married um, and are listening to us right now, unfortunately, you can't get out. We will not give you permission to get out. What you can do, on the other hand, is, work on is it. begin to start working hey. on certain things. Start realigning the wheels of the marriage. Let's see Start that talking. happens. Start talking about different things. Submit yourself, first of all, to the will of God. And make sure that God is the one that is leading you. And he will lead you right. And, yep. will, and, you know, and we pray that God will restore whatever it is that is broken in that marriage. Amen. And for, for those who are, who are not married yet. You have a chance. This is a chance for you to to really, really start yeah, doing the right 20. thing. Proverbs 28, 23 says, in the end, people appreciate frankness more than flattery. I didn't yep. say this. Tosin didn't write this. The Bible wrote this. It's right here. People appreciate frankness more than flattery. It's inside there. If you analyze tonight and you look at the whole thing, what we've talked about between last week and this week, and you really do an honest assessment and you're like, man. It may hurt. I am in uh I am in for for some real big trouble. And you feel like this is not even worth fighting for. Now might be the time to to really cut it off. It gets harder it the gets longer really you difficult. stay yeah, in a relationship that is failing. If I can tell you how many people are staying with the relationships that they're in because of the amount of because years of the length. spent. How long? Oh my oh, God. So after seven years, years now, you are telling me that years. this boy is not going to end up putting the ring on it. You are telling me to walk away. Yes. After this, his entire family, everybody in Dallas knows that me and him, <laughs> as in my, my name is already... I've already in, introduced him. I've changed my last name pretty much. It's just that people don't know yet. My no, sister. A bad, hey. a bad marriage is more difficult than going out on a Friday night. Okay, because bad marriage is tough. You're gonna to be lonely for if you break up. Who's gonna take you to the movies? How am I yeah. going to? Who's gonna pay for my dinner? Yes. Those are all like rubbish, rubbish little little things, little little problems. Yes. They're not problem. <laughs> they are first world problem. They are no problems at all. The kind of problem you will experience after marrying the wrong person. Mm. Or bringing children into that situation. Let's not even go there. Yeah. The, and people, the people level, go, and just so you know. This is not to scare anybody from, from marriage. We marriage want you to get married. Is we is married, man. Uh, we have been married for 15 years. And we I want tell you, to get you married. I enjoy it. Now, we, we, we get in arguments every now and then. Mm -hmm. But guess what? People who have the right background with their marriage, they right. will tell you how beautiful it is, how amazing it is. God implemented the institution of marriage. So he, so he, he definitely made it beautiful. But if you get into it for the wrong reason, so you get into it not knowing the right things to look out for, it is is something that can be very demanding and very painful. Oh yeah. Uh, so I, I want to quickly say something. I remember last week um, one of the questions that came up was um, how soon should we be talking about all these things? How soon uh, should we be asking these questions? To be honest with you, if I could give an honest, frank um, answer to that. Within the first two days, you should be asking all of these questions. Last week's, and you should not only be asking, but also be checking them. Looking out for them. Set, remember, we talked about make sure you guys are dating in, in a public setting. Make sure you're, you're hanging out in a public setting because that also helps check off a lot of your questions that you won't even have to ask. You yeah, some of the things you don't have to ask. You some have to you see. don't have to ask. You just have to observe, you know? Ask the, if you guys can, you know, go out with, um, hang out. With, if he says, oh, I'm hanging with my friends. Oh, is it okay if I, I come along? Just no pressure. I'm not trying to, I mean, take over your life. And, and it helps when you are not rushing into anything physical. That is, it, it keeps your mind 
clear because now you can really see and assess what you're getting into yeah and you, you don't there's no off, guilt there's no guilt when, to feel like you must stay exactly when you start off with the wrong foot you can't see right mm -mm. yeah you get blinded but guess what marriage is an eye opener they say love is blind yes marriage it does. will open your eyes quick yes you dating in a public quick. setting definitely it removes a lot of temptation a lot of stress a lot of pressure Beautiful. Um, I mean, just simple things. Observe. Maybe the guy plays soccer on Saturday morning and you just come watch and see how he's, when he, he misses that ball, how he reacts to the next person, how he talks all the way home about how just over just missing the ball. You know, little <laughs> things like that. It doesn't mean that's the end of it, but it's enough to start, okay, you're observing. How do I handle that? Is that something I'm okay with? Is this something that would be a problem for me? Like I said, your deal breaker may be like, perfect for me my deal breaker may be disastrous for you but at least know your deal breakers, breakers. and i think with that um, we are and before we close uh next week we're putting a, a Ooh, we're a gonna put a twist a twist a twist uh, next week into this so don't miss out don't miss on out it. be on the lookout and tell, your your friends. Friends. tell your friends tell your friends tell your friends uh, I think we're on to something great here. Uh, we're dishing out something beautiful. I'm also learning. I'm learning yes. from you guys uh, as well. I think Tosi and I, I can say for both of us, we're mm -hmm. both learning. Uh, so let's let's do it again, same time next week. Same time next week, 7 p.m. Again, we went past an hour. I don't know how we could go past Because we hour. love you guys. It's amazing. <laughs> and all of this is like great information. And like I said last week, we love you too much to watch you fail. Yes way too much and the reason why it might be a little selfish because when it happens well you're going to come back to us and you'll be talking about counseling we don't want to counsel you <laughs> afterwards so let's let's do all the talking now that's okay so we can but if anything happens you know we'll, we'll counsel we'll counsel but we'd rather not we'd rather not there you go you're being honest <laughs> let's fix it now all yeah. right, so we'll see you guys next week, 7 o'clock. Baby, do you want to close this out in a prayer? Yes, we'll close out with a quick word of prayer. Father, we thank you. Thank, thank you, you Lord. Uh, for who we are and who you've created us to be. Mm. Thank you for thank you. the current climate right now. Thank you that even that cannot hold us down. Yes. Thank yes. you that you've, give, you've not given us a spirit of fear, mm -hmm. but of a sound mind, Lord mm -hmm. God. Thank you because your word is forever settled. Mm -hmm. And even with all the craziness, you've given us reason to be, reasons to be joyful. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray, Lord God, that you keep us that you Amen. watch over us, Amen. that you that you keep our path straight, oh Lord God. Amen. And I speak to every single spirit out there of spirit of loneliness that is keeping people down, that is that is holding them back. Father, I, I speak into that in the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. and I say that it be removed in the name of Jesus. Amen. That Father, you would awaken our inner spirit, oh Lord God, Amen. that you would awaken Amen. our spirit to be able to connect Amen. with you. Lord God. Father, that the things that we're speaking on, Lord God, tonight, they will fall on fertile ground Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we just thank you. Thank you, Lord. We just glorify your name. Hallelujah. For in Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen. 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 You guys have a wonderful wow. rest of your week. Love you guys. And we'll be having a giveaway next week also. Yes. And we will be having a special edition next week. So please don't miss it. All, All right? right. Bye. Good night, y'all.